Take a look at how black my hands are from the cast iron. In fact, they're kind of shiny. That's from that graphite. It's really a mess. Okay, the work is back in the lathe. And the reason I'm uh, not done here is I want to face this off and the hub because the hub here is more than likely how I'm going to hold it uh, in a four jaw chuck in order to uh, face and put the step on the other side. So I would like this surface to be true and the hub here to be concentric with the bore and the thread. Ideally I'd like to take a cut across here but of course the uh, chuck jaws are in the way and it probably won't uh, be necessary. Remember that this chuck when it's mounted on the dividing head will uh, not be spinning like it is on a lathe. It'll be turned over very slowly a little bit at a time at a 40 to 1 ratio so balance and all of that doesn't matter but what I'm concerned about here is having a good and accurate way to chuck it up for the following operations while it's still in the lathe. So I'll do that now. I faced this surface, cleaned up this surface, faced the end. Now I'm putting just a little bit of a chamfer on uh, that corner. Those chips come off of there almost like a powder and they just spray every place. It's quite a mess. And finally, I can unchuck it. I'll clean it up real well. Now it's going to be chucked on this hub in order to face and step this side. I changed my mind but then again that's my prerogative because this is my video and this is my shop but I told you I was going to hold this in a four jaw chuck and I think it would be more accurate but this uh, old three jaw since I reconditioned it is pretty darn accurate so I'm holding it by the hub and uh, getting ready to face this and put the step on it and I just uh, measured this actually it's in uh, metric but it comes to 5.115 and about an eighth of an inch deep. So I'll start by facing that piece and then I'll work away here and put that step in there. Now I'll have to change tools uh, to a high speed steel tool because I want a nice square shoulder down there and all of my carbides have quite a bit of a radius on the end of them. I face this off using the carbide tool and you know that ran very very true it just took a very light skim coat I don't think I took three four thousandths off there and it was clean but naughty naughty this thing is marked India this plate and I don't know where I got it at an auction but it's clearly marked India and as I started machining I ran into yeah it's a cavity that they filled with body putty Surely your sins will find you out. In order to locate this step, which is kind of an awkward thing to do, there wasn't any good way to lay it out because I no longer have a center and I didn't want to take the time, so I just uh, roughly made some grooves until I got the approximate measurement that I want, and then I checked it with the caliper, and at this point that's extra large. And I'll remove uh, about an eighth of an inch in this direction, then uh, there's enough of a step for me to put my caliper on there and turn the step to that final dimension of 5.115. So that's my game plan on that. And that's, again, a nice sharp high-speed steel facing tool that I just ground. I've established a nice shoulder here, and it's about an eighth of an inch. And I'm shooting for a final dimension here of 5.115. And I'm currently at this measurement by my thumb. So now it's a simple turning project to get it down to that size and make it fit that three jaw chuck. As I approach my final dimension, I measure and I take a light cut and I measure and I take a light cut because, uh, you know, you take a little too much off and then what do you got? So now I'm down to where got a good fit. 
I'm going to take it out. I'll knock those corners off with a file right here and here and it's done ready to take out of the uh, the lathe. Got a real sweet fit. Just right. And you know I took enough off to where that uh, body putty filling job has disappeared. So the only surface on this that has not actually been machined is the actual periphery here and I guess there's no need. Now what I have to do next is locate three holes and I'm going to straddle the other three holes so there'll be one, two, three. I will drill them and tap them and I'm going to tap them five sixteenths so I really don't have room to to go any uh, larger than that. I would like to and uh, that's what I'll do first. I'll, I'll drill and tap the holes in here then I'll use transfer uh, screws to transfer them onto this then drill the holes through this, cap screw it on, and I think the job will be done. But I've been at this all day, so that's about it. It's supper time, and I'll get a fresh start in the morning. Time to go look at my grizzly book. Howdy, it's a new day. As a matter of fact, today is uh, New Year's Eve day of 2014 and uh, my wife just made me a nice ham and eggs breakfast so I'm raring to go here. Now I took the jaws out simply so that uh, the chuck will lay flat when I drill the holes. It doesn't wobble around. Now I have already laid the holes out. Now the way I did that is there's, there's three holes three, out, three layout lines. I just took my, uh, my center finder and put it on the center of one of these holes. Again, there's one, two, three, right on the center line, like that, to the best of my ability. And marked it over here, moved over to this one, marked it, and so on with the third one. And uh, therefore, they are exactly between the other uh, holes. Then I had to determine how much space that I have right here in regards to uh, having enough room for these 5 16 cap screws. So I moved the, this layout line a little bit inboard from what you see here on the other ones, the metric ones. And then I used uh, combinations are a little square just to lay them all out the same. Like that. And then went around, center punched them with my automatic and then I went a little bit deeper with a uh, regular center punch. Now I'm ready to drill and I'm going to use uh, 5 16 cap screws. I got two different lengths there see what uh, I think I'm going to be using the shorter ones which are one inchers or uh, maybe they're seven eighths yeah these are one inchers I had those in stock now uh, some time ago when I first got this uh, lathe and this chuck I had to make a chuck key which is 12 millimeter and that's just made out of tool steel I never did harden it but you know that's pretty beefy and I don't see anything uh, wearing out on it during my lifetime, do you? Alright, I just got back from the drill press. Now what I did was to spot all three holes with a, a 5 uh, 64 drill bit. That way the hole isn't going to move on me. So I always like to do that. Now I know this takes extra time. Now I'll go in with a 5 30 seconds bit. Again, that is just an arbitrary size that I selected. And I'll go one inch deep. And by the way, this is cast iron. Same as the uh, backing plate. Then I'll go in with my quarter inch bit uh, one inch deep on all three holes. And it's ready to tap. And I'll start by using a, a 5 16 18 uh, taper tap. Can you see that that's tapered? About seven taper teeth. That allows you to go nice and straight. And less chance of breaking it.
So you don't want to break a, a, a drill bit or a tap in something like this. Well, if that did happen, and it, sometimes it does happen, what I would do is relay out everything and just move over a little bit. Grind the old tap or drill off. But, you know, the older you get, the less often you break something, uh, I guess, because it's just happened so many times. Then I'll finish up with a, a plug tap. I do not think I uh, will need a bottoming tap. I'd rather drill a little extra deep to avoid using a bottoming tap which uh, there's a you know good better chance of breaking a bottoming tap so you you want to avoid it if you don't uh, need to so just overcome that possibility by dr drilling a little bit deeper than what you really need okay back to the drill press and that size next all three holes are drilled quarter inch one two three now what I did on this one notice how it looks a little bit larger I went in with a 5 16 bit oh perhaps only an eighth of an inch deep and sometimes I like to do that because it's easier to start the tap straight when you have a little uh, uh, guide what I've done is created a tapping guide and now I'm ready to tap no good way to hold this uh, so I'm just gonna uh, put it right here on the bench and, and start tapping away. Uh, it's it's too big to put in a vise, but there's a tendency for it to want to spin. It would be nice if you had somebody to help you when you do this. And I'll tap all the way until I strike the bottom of the hole. And I might need to use a regular tap wrench for this rather than a T-handle. Hands are getting black again. I couldn't get it all off last night no matter how I scrubbed with a brush. That was just a little bit tougher tapping than I anticipated so I did have to clamp it to the bench. That worked pretty well and I used uh, this type of uh, tap wrench. This is one of my favorites. It's a uh, Greenfield. I know there's some other people out there that like their Greenfield but they are really nice. Now I'll blow those three holes out and uh, check the fit and I'm ready to do some transferring. All the burrs are off and I have uh, blown the holes out. Now for those of you who haven't seen my other videos on transfer screws, these are transfer screws. This is a whole set in here. There's usually six if you don't lose them in this little tube with a cap and the end of course is a wrench little bit of a hex on the end can you see that and I will uh, install three of those with just a little bit of the point sticking up and I can feel that then this will be placed on there tapped with a soft hammer and I'll put an index mark on there and that will transfer the holes onto this piece now there of course is another way of doing this a fella could have laid the holes out uh, on the backing plate and uh, then put it into place transferred them with transfer punches but the reason I didn't want to do that is I wanted to locate these holes such that talked about it a little while ago that they weren't too close to this edge here. I didn't want to break through that edge but yet I wanted it inside of, of the red mark there. Okay. Three transfer screws in place. And this is a temporary mark here. Later I'll put some center punch marks so it'll be reassembled exactly the same way because more than likely the spacing between the holes the way I did it are going to be you know just fairly close. Okay. 
one one two and uh, three can you see them now if, if they aren't quite deep enough then I would just center punch them a little bit deeper and then I'm ready to drill these holes now when I put when I drill those on the drill press I'll have to lay them on some parallel so that doesn't tip and I'll drill again a pilot hole and the final hole is going to be 5 16 for the cap screws. I'll do all that off camera. All three holes drilled 5 16 and now I ran into a little problem. These bolts need to be counterbored and the reason for that, first of all I don't like bolts to stick up like that because they're knuckle busters, but secondly there's interference if you recall how this fit up on the dividing head uh, this will interfere with that other plate so these need to be counterboard the problem being that I'm afraid the counterboard is going to break out just a little bit and uh, not that it would hurt anything but I don't like the appearance and this is the counterbore and it fits uh, 2964s the bolts will fit into 2764s barely and I think I'd rather drill them 2764s and I just use this drill rather than a counterbore and hope that it won't break out so I think I'll do that but as you can see that's pretty close and if it does break out it will want to lead out pull out counterbore of course wouldn't do that so this is a little bit of a problem I don't like it to say that I was close to breaking through is a bit of an understatement that wall is about as thin as a Gillette blue blade also another thing that I did here instead of drilling 5 16 holes I drilled just one size over and uh, you know that makes your life easier as far as a clearance size uh, is concerned so I'll just tighten these all down and then I'll make another mark here besides my magic marker line so I always assemble it the same I'll tighten those down well but a real quick story here that bears repeating and I've told this in earlier videos but since some of you are new viewers I gotta tell you again my brother also was a retired teacher in the shop and uh, he had a set of these in, in the class and a boy came up to him actually it was a young man it was junior college and he said Mr. Peterson his name was Peterson too, you know. I did you a big favor. I noticed that all of your Allen wrenches were rounded off. I took them over to the grinder and cleaned them up for you. How about that? At last the job is done. I've got the chuck installed on the dividing head. The jaws are back in the chuck. I've got it freewheeling now for direct indexing. I want you to be sure and watch my many other videos that I'm going to have on dividing heads. This is just uh, one of them. And I'm going to cut gears and uh, do other things. Talk about gears and calculations. And even show you how to cut gears that would work on your south bend or, or your uh, uh, atlas lathe or whatever lathe you got. As long as you got one of these and a dividing head or, and the gear cutters and uh, some other apparatus you can cut your own gears but it's not particularly easy so be sure and watch those videos and there was one other video on this fiasco right here that didn't work out for me so be sure and watch that one and uh, this is Tubal Cain saying happy new year and so long for now